Do you guys remember when I totally called this back in November when the uh, state media of China actually put out a painting of a horse cloud, which is Ma Yun's name, and basically told him that he was nothing? You remember, remember that? It kind of showed Ma that it doesn't matter what you do, mm -hmm. you will eventually be a victim of the CCP if they think that you're a, a threat. Sure. Hey, Low Winners, it's Lobby6 here with another video. How are you guys doing? Now, there's a very, very hot topic. Where is Jack Ma? Now, Jack Ma, or Ma Yun, as he's called, which actually literally translates as horse cloud in Chinese, is a massive multi-billionaire. In fact, one of the most powerful people within China, if not the world, who is one of the co-founders of Alibaba. Now, if you didn't know, Alibaba is a website where you can literally buy anything, anything that you can even imagine. If you need a supplier from China, Alibaba is the website which gives you those suppliers from China. So you can dream up something, it will be there. Basically, a lot of what Alibaba is is kind of like a Wild East version of Amazon or eBay or something like this because you can find anything that you want, particularly counterfeit goods. Now, they, they've since tried to kind of curb that and they said that they're really cracking down and they have IP protection, but it is IP theft galore on Alibaba. So Jack Ma sets up this massive website, which is a huge front to get either counterfeit goods or custom-made goods uh, you know, from China to ship pretty much all over the entire world. Now, when I say they're trying to like crack down on the whole IP theft thing and how they're trying to get rid of knockoffs, you can literally search for knockoff goods and they're all over the place. You can literally type in counterfeit good stuff and find it all over the place. Are you in the mood for a Rolex? How about a Rolexable? How about a Trump watch? How about a Biden watch? What are you doing? Just biding my time. You a uh, big Sonic the Hedgehog fan? Hmm? Maybe more of a Mario guy? It's me, Mario. See, Alibaba kind of is one of those like stalls that you see in New York City selling counterfeit Rolex Rolexes or whatever they're selling, all those fake goods and stuff, but like on a massive, huge scale. Thankfully, the prevalence of the you know all the fake goods that his company offers is where all the fakeness stops because it gets real when he shreds on the guitar. His inspirational quotes and interviews are the envy of pretty much any public speaker. Humans can never create another animal that is smarter than humans. Especially when you have so many smart people, it's impossible to make another smart people. I, I very much disagree with that. And those pipes? No, not those pipes. Seriously, that motorcycle? Why did they actually have a V-twin motorcycle and then dub over a weedy little 125cc engine noise? I I'm gonna fix this for you, Jack. I'm gonna fix this for you. Doesn't that sound better? That's not to discredit the entire website. I mean, you can get a lot of real intellectual property stuff from China, maybe a screw or a piece of technology that you need for your company. All that stuff exists. Anyway, my point is, all of that stuff made Jack Ma, or Ma Yun, a very, very wealthy man. In fact, $41.8 billion of wealthy man. Now that's an issue in China, because although China is kind of the Wild East, you know, outlaw version of, of capitalism with very little regulation. It's actually a lot more regulated than you think. Anyway, Jack Ma is one of the most popular people, one of the most inspirational people in China. You see, it's this underdog thing. You can look at him, and I'm not judging his appearance or anything, but when you look at him, you would know that he would not be naturally successful in a, in a job where you know your image really counted and that really counts for a lot in China. In fact, a lot of people don't know this, but when you submit your resume in China, whether you're a foreigner or a Chinese, you have to include your picture so that people who are hiring you can decide whether they like you or not. It's literally how it works. So Jack has all these stories about how he tried to even get a job at KFC when it first came to his town in Hangzhou um, and they rejected him. 
Uh, he tried to get a job as a police officer, constant rejection over and over again, but eventually becoming the richest person in China, save for the leader of China. He rose to so much power that on Forbes' list of the top whatever most powerful people, he's number 21. So he's higher than a lot of people that you might know. However, who do you think is the most powerful person in the entire world? Just take a wild guess. Time's up. Yeah, you guessed it right. It's uh, Winnie the Pooh. Now, the most powerful person in the world is the leader of China that decided he would go back to Chairman Mao, Mao Zedong kind of tactics, that era of power, where everything is below him. There is no competition. There is party infighting, but he is always coming out on top, removing term limits and becoming emperor for life. You see the era of China that I lived through when I was there for 10 years? It was pretty awesome. Like, it's a gray zone, that's how China operates. China operates on corrupt gray zone. It is a corrupt gray zone. Now, a lot of that gray zone allowed for people to make money through business, and that's fantastic. That's the thing in China, is if you keep your head down, you can make money and you can be successful. The problem is in today's China, it's more about who you know and what Communist Party of China ties that you have, more so than it ever was before. Right now, to be an entrepreneur in China, it's fine, you can do it, but if you get too big, you will attract the attention of the anti-corruption campaign of the Communist Party of China, and that's actually what happened. There's a lot of speculation about all these triggers, and you know, I'll, I'll actually quote Jack Ma. This is the, the thing that people keep talking about that got him in trouble. He said, today's financial system is the legacy of the industrial age. We must set up a new one for the next generation and young people. We must reform the current system. Now, whether or not that actually got him in trouble, the evidence is already there. He's been gone for over two months. We can look at his reality TV show, which is called African Business Heroes, where he gives away like one and a half million dollars to entrepreneurs in Africa as part of the whole soft power propaganda campaign of investing in Africa. China's the big hero of Africa. They even removed his picture off the website and replaced him with another Alibaba executive. It's getting a bit dicey and people are concerned because someone of that wealth, someone of that power, certainly commands a lot of respect and, you know, controls a lot of the country. It really, he really does, especially the economy. I can make this super simple. It's not necessarily a quote, he said. It's very simple. If you've been to China, you lived in China any meaningful amount of time and you've met party officials or you've, been, you know, spent any time with important people in China, you'll know that if you get too big, that becomes a problem. If you gain too much of a following, that becomes a problem. Even if you're a famous celebrity, just a person that's on movies and stuff, that becomes a problem when you're too popular because your opinions become something that might replace the leadership's opinions in terms of the youth or people that are looking for inspiration or a role model, and that's exactly what Jack Ma was. He could thrive in that gray zone area of China. He could become a multi-billionaire really with impunity and command his own army of you know followers and inspire people around the country. But really when it comes to brass tax is that under Xi Jinping's anti-corruption campaign. Someone like Jack Ma really can't overstep his boundaries and that's something that he did just by being that wealthy. I mean, Jack's been a little mouthy in the past. Uh, for example, when he was in Shanghai at a conference and I quote, he said, the global financial regulators are an old people's club ill-suited to oversee Chinese tech innovation. And that is just something in China that you don't say, you don't do those things. You do not shake up the status quo. The only thing that makes the status quo is the top-down leadership of Xi Jinping himself, Chairman Xi. The thing is, this whole anti-corruption campaign, when I was there, when it was rolled out, it was kind of popular amongst the, the people of China because they saw China as, if you're not benefiting from the corruption, if you're not in the leadership or you're not a member of the Communist Party of China, you're not gonna like the fact that corruption exists because you get less because of it, right? I've, I went to villages that would always get shaken down by CCP officials or the PLA, and they would have everything taken or a good chunk of their money taken from their village because that's just how it worked. It's almost like a mafia racket or protection fees. The thing is when the chairman made that huge speech about how we're gonna root out corruption, kind of Soviet style, we're gonna get rid of all these bad eggs and stuff out of the party, the people were in massive support and that's what gave Xi Jinping so much support initially because China is a unbelievably unfair and very, very corrupt country. You'd know if you've been there. The thing is, in a top-down system like China, Corruption is the oil that keeps those gears running smoothly. That's just how it works. So when people started getting arrested for corruption or arrested for speaking out against the party, let me list off a couple people. 
Ren Zixiang, a retired real estate tycoon, fell off the radar after accusing the Communist Party of mishandling the coronavirus pandemic. Beijing sentenced Ren, who was 69 to 18 years in prison. The country arrested critics of the response to the pandemic as well, including Xu Jiangrun and law professor Zhang Shuizhong, who was a human rights lawyer. Xiao Jianhua, an asset manager, was abducted from a hotel in Hong Kong in January 2017. Xiao disappeared into Chinese custody, and the country later seized parts of his company, Tomorrow Group. Meng Hongwei, which is the former head of Interpol, disappeared in 2018 during a trip to China from France. And China sentenced him to 13 and a half years of, uh, pr in prison on bribery charges. This list could go on forever. The thing is, like, whether people got arrested for corruption or not, you know, it, it happened. It did. Corrupt people were arrested because that's just the nature of how the Chinese Communist Party works. People have to use corruption to thrive. So when you're arresting people and you're getting rid of powerful adversaries or not even adversaries, just people that are challenging your power, even in terms of public image. You're not arresting people about corruption anymore. This isn't about corruption. This is just a powerful tool for a dictator or a leader with ultimate power like Chairman Xi to be able to eradicate his enemies or placate them or make them shut up. And it's also a way to consolidate all of those assets, all of that money and power into state hands. They, they want the Chinese Communist Party to be able to have those things. To operate outside of the Communist Party of China means you are not going to be successful. And that's something that Jack Ma kind of was doing. That's the issue is that power got to his head and you can see through his own performances. I mean, he started his own movie. Power was getting to his head for sure, but you can't be that powerful in China under its current leadership. It just doesn't work like that. And that is the bane of China's existence. It's not that people can't become powerful, but it limits your ceiling. It limits how much influence you can have, and it limits how much innovation you can actually have, period. Because at the end of the day, the Chinese Communist Party is always the victor. To sum it up, in China, it can seem like a fairly free society as long as you don't get too big. Because when you get too big in China, you have two options. Either you get absorbed into the party, or, you get erased from public memory. And Jack, it really sucks, I get it. Living under the Communist Party of China is no cakewalk. It's not, it's not great. Especially for people that, you know, think outside the box a little bit. If you guys like what I do and you want to support me, go to over to patreon.com slash laoai86. Uh, I talk to you guys every day there. I answer my messages every single morning. Uh, it's a great dialogue. I post other stuff, behind the scenes content and all that kind of stuff. And it's the only way I can keep this stuff going, especially with this whole demonization issue and the whole drama that's going on with YouTube. Hopefully we can sort that out. Um, it could go a lot deeper than we actually think. If you support freedom of speech and you don't want your internet censored, and you want to support voices like mine, I truly do appreciate it because we're on the same page. I want to say thank you so much, Law Winners, and I'll catch you on the next one.